So to summarize, I think what the issue is, or one of the issues with this microwave, is the magnetron, the, uh, the magnet here on the bottom is fractured and split open. And I'm sure that must have had some effect on how the, uh, the magnetron worked. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, convert this over, this microwave over to use, uh, I'm going to put a candelabra bulb in it right here, and that'll be the heat source and for whatever I need to store inside here. So you can see inside, and the way I'm going to do this is, you can see right in here is a panel. I'm going to remove that panel. It's just riveted in with plastic, um, a plastic rivet. And uh, then I'll be able to reach in there from inside and just put a bulb in or take a bulb out. You can see the head of the rivet. Okay. Pop that out. I'm not going to use this. This uh, appears to be some sort of mylar that allows the microwave, I guess, to fly right through to contain anything else. Here's the head of the rivet. So now uh, I've got it open access right into the side. And we've got a candelabra base, light bulb base here. What I'm going to do, mount that right into the side here and have it stick right into the opening. I can have that uh, right in there like that. And then I can have a bulb. I can just screw in a bulb right in there. It'll be sort of recessed in there. And I can also have it, there's a hole here. Might be a better plan to have it right there like that. Or tilt it sort of like that. That way the, the bulb is uh, available, but not the wiring. So that's my plan. I'm going to install that and then I'm just going to wire it up, the bulb right up to this uh, power cord here. And so whenever I plug it in, it's going to have uh, power right to this bulb. I might even go ahead and use this little fuse here. I'll change it out to maybe a, an amp fuse instead of, that's probably a 10 amp, 20 amp. Don't need that much. Uh, but uh, I'm going to put the, the candelabra bulb holder right there. I'm going to go ahead and wire this up. I'm going to leave the ground connection on there. Zip off these. Of course, I've got it unplugged. And this is my base. I'm going to use the, I've got some wires I just saved from the project a while back. Old ceiling fan project. I'm just going to use the white and black, that makes sense. And give myself ample. First I'm going to uh, connect it to the candelabra base. The camera, the, and this light base has a silver screw and a brass screw. Silver screw, of course, is for the neutral, the white wire.
And you want to install the wire where it's uh, going to be pulled into the screw and not pushed. And you'll you'll know what I mean as soon as you try and do it if you do it wrong. So when you're tightening the screw, it's actually trying to pull the, the, the length of the wire up into it. If you put it in the wrong way, it might work, or uh, but um, you might have some problems getting it to uh, stay in there. So we've got the uh, white wire on the silver, put the black wire on the brass. Then there's a cardboard insulator. Goes over that, slides down on the pins. And now this is going to go right in this hole. And I'm going to just uh, cut that out right there. And I can go ahead and make these connections up here. And I'm just going to crimp these together. I'm using these crimp on wire nuts here. Not my favorite thing to use, but I'm just trying to, oh, there they are. But just trying to use them up because I don't really care for them much. I guess they have their place. You always want to tug everything once you crimp it in to make sure it's tight. Sometimes it's not. Yeah, I was just thinking the other day I was going to try and find a small refrigerator or something to use for uh, storage out in a shop which is unheated space and uh, tends to have a problem with moisture and things like that. But this little microwave will do just fine for that. It hopefully has a door that seals pretty tight. As long as you've got a small heat source in there, it'll run all the humidity out. There we go, we've got the uh, candelabra bulb wired in. And I just need to find a, uh, a way to mount this right in that location. I was thinking about using something like this. just want to do something uh, simple and effective. seems to be solidly in place. I'm just going to bend that on my vise and have it come around and put a nut in there. I've been a piece of this aluminum here. Let's see if I got the right angle. Please, that'll work just fine. Let's see, I'm going to put a bend right here. I'm going to cut it about there. Bend it there. I'm going to put a hole right there. Right into that. 
Then I'll mark the hole where that's going to go when I get done. So I'm going to drill a hole here, pass an bolt that right into there. I'm going to put a bend right in this area and cut it right there. So I got these shears here. I think I can just use that to cut the aluminum. And, uh, now I just have to put a bend right here and a couple of holes in it. So I've got that bent and uh, I think that's going to be just about right. Got the step drill I'm going to use to uh, make some holes. So I'm going to put one right in this area here. Approximately right there. line up pretty good. My other one's going to be right about there in the center. I'm going to go ahead and get the bolts. I got a kit here of electronic hardware. The tricky thing is this one, I need to fill that hole. I think I can use a quarter inch nut right behind it and a pretty healthy screw, a uh, number 10 screw. I can put that right through there like that and uh, then drill a smaller hole and that will hold that in place. That will work pretty good for that. I'm going to need to bolt that there. I'm going to use another. I'm liking the number 10s. Just put one there and drop it down to that. This one here looks pretty healthy. What I'm going to do uh, is uh, get, get, get these really tight, but then I'm going to go back and just put a dab of glue on there and hold it. Hold in place. Now I can just kind of eyeball where this hole needs to be. I'm 
We're about right in there. That's pretty simple. So now you can see maybe you can see. Let's see if I can zoom in there. So you can see I just made this little bracket here and it's holding this candelabra base and the I see the insulators here holding it away I'm also just gonna bend this up a little I want that to be up in there I'm also gonna put a zip tie right in here just to hold that up once I get this tightened in place, that's that's uh, that'll be perfect. And so inside here, I can reach inside here and put a my bulb right inside that. So I've got everything tightened down. I put some silicone on there. To uh, just glue all that stuff in place and keep it from uh, coming loose. I'm going to put the lid on this thing now and button it back together. When you're doing that, you can see uh, on this cover here. There's a there's a lip, a metal uh, bent over tab, and that is designed to click into the front here, or slide into the front. And that gives it that seamless, that seamless look, I guess. No fasteners. So you have to push all three sides in and uh, push it to the front, and now they're captive. And so now I can go ahead and uh, put the screws back in. Got a Phillips in the side here. I'm just going to put in whatever screws I can find. Uh, I don't care about the torques. It's just kind of a pain to have to go get two kinds of drivers. bottom ones are the, the most critical. They hold the sides down. And I'm just see if I can get away with just using all Phillips. I doubt I'll ever have to go in this again.
There we go, I've got it all buttoned up and now it's a hot box. I can get a ball, plug that in, and uh, have a warmed uh, little box here for my welding rods or um, adhesives, whatever I want to put in there. So I got my box converted over. Uh, So I got this old microwave converted over to a hot box now, or a warming box. I'm going to keep it, uh, keep it around, mount it up on a wall or something, and plug it in. Put a low wattage bulb in it, probably an LED, like a four watt, just to have a small heat source in there. And I can use it for storing uh, adhesives or welding rods or whatever I need to store that I don't want to get humidity on and uh, have it become destroyed. A lot of things. Uh, this will help. Thanks for watching and good luck with your project and uh, be careful. See, so yeah, I've uh, got it finished. I finished converting the uh, the microwave oven over. I took all the guts out, converted it over to uh, like a warming box so I can keep adhesives in there or welding rods or whatever I want. Out, It's out in my storage room or building where uh, it's unheated space. So I got the uh, microwave converted over to a warming box. I can mount it out in my storage area. It's an uh, unheated space and I can uh, put a little, like a four watt LED bulb in here that'll last a long time and plug it in. And it'll provide a, a gentle heat source for whatever I keep inside of here. And it'll, uh, it's uh, good for uh, unheated space. It's down here in the south anyway, it, we get a lot of humidity and things condense on, uh, often and you get your, your tools will get rusty, you know, th things that run on batteries will uh, kind of get corroded, quit working. You'll find the batteries diminish their charge they, when they're in a hundred. Okay, so I got the, uh, the old microwave converted over, now it's a warming box. I can put it out in my unheated uh, uh, workspace and use it for storing things in there that um, that would be damaged by humidity, high humidity and things and, and the condensation that results in that. Uh, I can keep my welding rods in there or uh, some adhesives or uh, battery operated uh, devices, anything I want to protect from the high humidity and the resulting condensation that occurs from being out in an unheated space. So, I'm going to put this microwave to use. It's no longer going to cook. It's just going to warm. So looking at the bottom here, I think I'm going to try and get the little motor out that's inside there. So they've got this panel here that looks like it's somehow removable. Little strands of metal. So I guess you could maybe you could access this if you needed to. Oh, and I see. And when you want to put it back, that's interesting. you can clip this away to get to it. And then, if when you want to put it back, you just rotate it and go in these tabs here and use a screw so you can put it back. Pretty cool. They made it so you can get to this little motor if you need to. Got a little Phillips here. Let's see. I want to take this out. Never know when you might need a little motor here. This is a 120 volt. It says five, no, six rotations a minute, clockwise slash counterclockwise, synchronous motor. This thing might be handy to have around. Might be able to do something with that. And I don't know, I'm not going to really, I guess I could bother to put something back in there. Just because 
he did such a nice job of uh, providing it. I think I can just rivet that back in place. So if you do end up clipping this access panel out to get to the motor and you want to put that back, uh, you would definitely want to, uh, it might keep a rodent or something from getting in there. But uh, you just simply, when it's in there, you, it's in place like this, clipped out. And they very cleverly left tabs and mounting tabs so you can just insert it backwards and use a sheet metal screw. Yeah, there's already a hole there that appears to be tapped. Let's see how that how that works out. Yeah, it is taking the screw tightly. So they thought about it and uh, they made this hatch accessible and repairable. But they went ahead and just did it all in one piece. That's a pretty cool idea. I, I like that idea there. So it, you'd have to cut it to get it out, but there is a way to put it back if you want to or you'll need to. That's pretty ingenious, I like that. Somebody, somebody was thinking when they did that. Somebody at Panasonic. That's pretty cool, I like it a lot.